All right, just here live on the live discussion. I want to um, see if I could set this up um, because right now, uh, the way things are going, I will have to see if I could invite um, this person here so that they'll be able to join in on the discussion. Um, I did, you know, kind of you know, send things out uh, to them, but uh, they can't necessarily be on camera. Uh, so here's the thing. So this is how they want to uh, work it. Um, I invited them uh, to the discussion uh, through live. Uh, so they're not able to go on camera. So they'll be able to you know, chat while this live discussion is happening. This is in reference to a um, you know, a clash of thoughts as far as like the US economy is concerned. So um, I wanted to, you know, have this person within this discussion to kind of like explain their stance, um, but they'll, you know, do it by typing uh, while I'll explain it uh, here through, you know, this live session. So um, this person is on is Antonio uh, or Tony Watley. And they want to basically put in their case as far as like what's going on with the economy. Um, in that one person in particular is not really responsible or fully responsible for the increase in employment that has been taking place over the past few months plus. So uh, the thing about it is, is like what we got is uh, they are going to discuss their issue um they you know are pretty much going to type their uh discussion here they can't go on camera uh for a specific reason and i'll respect that reason so um for that they will have to basically uh type um their case uh on this live discussion uh so i will uh, give them that opportunity to uh, type um, their case. So uh, what we're going to, you know, basically go at is that, you know, with the U.S. economy that there had been a steady increase as far as like the economy is concerned within America, the unemployment rate was going down month after month after month. And there have been a few things that have been taking place within this country uh, to increase the amount of businesses being created. And because of that, that increases the amount of jobs uh, that have been, you know, out there for uh, people within this country. So um, that is kind of like getting more of the activity as far as like people spending money, people going on, you know, trips or, you know, buying products and things like that. And that is increasing the amount of, um, you know, activity that's happening within this country. Uh, so, you know, with that being said, I feel that, you know, there's certain things that have happened over the course of the past two, three years that have boosted the amount of businesses that are here in this country and because of that that boosts the economy uh that's here in this country because over the past 10 to 15 years actually longer than that the amount of jobs and businesses within america have basically disappeared and have been shipped overseas because there had been I would kind of say property taxes that were, you know, posted onto these businesses, particularly uh, for uh, producing goods and services that the heads of those companies said, you know what, it costs too much to stay here. So if I could get this stuff done overseas, that's what I'm going to do. And with that being said, they went ahead, they closed shop in America. And they went to other countries and set up shop over there where they don't have to pay as much money for operating costs, for paying workers, for paying off insurance and other stuff. 
So they get to keep more of the profits while the workers that they have overseas don't get the same amount of pay that people within America uh, would have. So while you do have a lot of the materials and goods and all of that stuff coming from other countries, the America basically still has to pay uh, for that because of exports and uh, the exchange rate and everything like that. So um, with that being said, and that's why things had changed over over the past uh, you know few years plus. Um, hopefully, um, you know, my brother uh, brother Tony is uh, still with us uh, so that he can um, you know explain what what he feels is going on um, currently. So uh, what I wanted to do is see if I could uh, share this uh, screen because you know at one particular point. Um, when I did a uh, live, um, not necessarily on uh, Facebook, I think it was on Facebook. Yeah, it might have been on Facebook. I did a live on Facebook. I tried to share the screen, and because of Facebook and um, the browser, it ended up uh, freezing. So I had to, you know, do it over again. Um, so, you know, I feel that this is, let's see. So I'm going to see if I can pull this up. Um, hold on just a moment. Um, wanted to, you know, get this going. So I'm going to share the screen here. And this is, you know, this is going to work. Um, so I wanted to talk about, you know, how things are operating as far as like the, like trade is concerned between the U.S. and other countries. And, you know, there's one particular country that has been, you know, in the spotlight over the past five, six, seven, eight months or so um, in the mainstream. And while there was something in particular that did happen as far as like trade is concerned um, recently, I want to go through the history of, you know, trade uh, between the U.S. and this country. So. I'm going to see if I can pull this up, uh, this tab up, and uh, this should come up on the screen here. Uh, so uh, what we have is, this is the US trade in goods with China, right? And the thing with this is, this is showing 1985. Man, I'm not sure if uh, you know many of y'all were um, around in 1985, but I was a little bit of kid <laughs> in, in 1985. Yeah. But uh, with that being said, uh, this shows the amount of exports, well, the, the, the uh, monetary value of exports and imports um, between the U.S. and China. And this is like back in 1985, and it shows like, you know, per month. So it shows like with the total amount of exports that it was in a billions, I would say, um, 3.8 billion, because it's like figures in millions of dollars, but 3.8 billion or 3.85 billion uh, to 3.86 billion uh, for imports or the, the, the goods that are coming in uh, from China. So uh, with that being said, the balance was a <laughs> it's like a six million dollar deficit uh to china so that's basically you know six million dollars behind eight ball but then the next year it started to go crazy as far as like the overall increase so you went from just six million in 1985 to 1.66 billion in 1986. So if y'all think back to you know what was happening in the um, mid 80s and things like that, you, you had of course the um, you know presidential um, regime of Ronald Reagan and we know who the vice president was. So we'll you know bring that up a little bit later. Um, 
So you see that how you go from six million to one point six six billion. They had the amount of exports out of the U.S. be much less than the imports coming from China to give you this deficit. So it goes to 1.6 billion, and then it keeps increasing to 2.79 billion, or almost 2.8 billion, to 3. Point, almost 3.5 billion. You keep going, 6 billion, 10 billion, 12 billion. You see, you see, see where we're going at, and this is 91, 92. I'm trying to go through this quick here. Um, hopefully, um, Tony is still you know, with us so that he could uh, type, but I'm not sure uh, if he has uh, that time. So um, I just wanted to go through this presentation. He can look at this presentation, he can type his response, and then we could go from there. Now, uh, here we are, 1994, deficit. Look, 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 at how, look at how much we're not even, you know, sending out to China. This is what, 9.2 billion or 9.3 billion rounded up compared to 38.8 billion rounded up. That's why you get this much of a deficit. Keep going, keeps going up. 33, 39, 49, 56, 68, 83. Now you could, you know, try to count, you know, the whole thing here is that you know you got inflation and all of that but now all right so i'm gonna see if i could post this up here so bottom line here this is what tony is inquiring the bottom line here is me wondering why you think Donald trump is so great not go great but so great for this economy and i want you to show proof of that all right so this is what we're going with I'm I'm showing this I'm showing this to to prove to prove uh, to Tony what's going on here now and I'm going at it from this side I have you know I have another thing too that I'm going to show uh, but we're gonna keep going through this 2001 2002 here we go billions 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 keeps going up keeps going up keeps going up 08 09 273 295 315, 318, 2013, 344, 367, 346, okay, 375. Now, 2017, we see that this is still a big deficit, right? And we know who was in office beginning in 2017, right? Okay, so we have this whole thing here continuing 2018. Now, in 2019 was when you basically saw what was happening as far as like trade is concerned because the amount of exports from the U.S. has a lot less than what the imports were from China at the very least. Now, there were a couple of things within the trade deal that Donald Trump did do and that you know, with that, it changed things to to where the U.S. started to get back into more of the positive into other than the negative. Okay, now let me see uh, what uh, Tony has posted up. I'm going to go through. Now he has uh, showed the link there, so I'm going to have that uh, in another. Um, in another uh, thread, I mean, another tab here. So um, it's going to be, it's titled US exports to the EU still three times higher than to China. Okay. So, so the exports of US goods to the European Union total 337 billion in 2019. So I'll have to, you know, basically look at this uh, here. You know, while I still have this, um, you know, while I still have this thing up, like I said, I'm looking over that uh, particular um, article that you had. But we, what I'm doing is I'm focusing on this right here first. Okay, now, like I said, 
2019, this thing started to go down as far as like overall compared to 2018, where it was 419.5 billion to 345.6 billion. Now, they had new trade deal where it would be more beneficial to not get goods from China and start getting more goods produced in-house. It's like I said, you go all the way back down. What was the what was the deficit then? Just what six million? So how do you go from six million in 1985 all the way to 345.6 billion last year? All the stuff that's being produced in China that's sent here. But yet nothing's produced here. So that's one side of it. Now, of course, I'm going to see if I can go through, go to that. Now, that figure was three times higher than the total of goods exported from the United States to China. Now, you're going to have to, you're going to have to post where particularly that is going to, okay? Because you're talking about China and Europe, but that's specific countries. Now you're talking about exports, but what about imports as well? You see, so I'm focusing on China right now. You have in one particular article, which we will go through, but I'm showing here that you don't go from having a negative balance of in around 20, you know, 20, what is that? Uh, 20 million pretty much per month or so. And then get into this, we're actually 20 billion, not 20 million, 20 billion. And then going down to basically 16 or 12 billion. Okay. So that's on one instance. So I'm going to remove that uh, from the thread here. So the thing is, talking about the EU is one monetary group. Okay. Now, now the thing about it is, is that you're gonna you're basically bringing up something in reference to the EU in comparison to the U.S. Now I'm gonna tell you this: for a good amount of time, what they were using for currency was valued much higher than the dollar. We both know that, but I will say this: that's going to change. That will basically change so you're going to have the um the dollar you know basically going to change as far as like the euro now it's getting closer you know that thing is going to be closer though because the thing is with the euro that's that's not you know that's not going to be um you know i would say uh worth more than the dollar uh, pretty soon. Right now, it's almost at a one-to-one -one rate. Like one euro is worth one dollar and nine cents. That's going to basically change. You know, um, I'm going to see if I could get the thing about it. It's like, um, yeah, that thing is changing because at one point it was at just uh, checking here about mm, one to I would say what point nine six. So let's see. Hold on. Actually, I, I could share that. Hold on. I, I was just man. See, yeah. I wish, I wish Tony. Yeah, Tony. I wish you was you would be on your audio, man. But hey, I know that you, you're basically in a secret location, so we we gotta you know keep it that way. Um. So you see how actually the dollar was basically this low um, in 2018. So you see how often this thing had fluctuated, okay? But now it's going to change and it's starting to go up and up and up slowly, but it's going up, okay? You see it around 90, you know, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, and 0 0.92. But that's where it is right now is at 0.92. So 
that's the thing about it. Hey, uh, Taryn, what's going on? I see that you're back uh, here. So, um, so now, uh, let, let me see. Hold on. Let me see if I can get that too. Um, that thing with um, the European Union, because you did, is that was the thing that I was, you know, basically trying to look for. Okay. Now, all right, let's see what we got. Do, 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 do. This goes back to 97. All right, hold on. All right, let me see if I can share that then real quick. All right. So we're going to <laughs> peace, 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 Darren. <laughs> peace, peace, peace. <laughs> um, let me uh pull pull this thing up uh, here um real quick. Um yeah, if you're able to if you're able to do that, Tony, that, that would kind of work. But don't you know don't like get get too much in trouble um with that. Um so if you're able to, you know, be you know be free, uh that that would be cool. But if not, it's still okay. Uh now, so we're going into this thing here with the European Union. All right, goes up back to 1997. And uh here it just shows like you know, like I said, figures are in millions of dollars. Um, so this is through billion, so 143.9 billion to 160.8 billion. So you see what the deficit is there, and then it keeps going from 16 to 28 to 45, 58, 64, 85, you know, 97. So it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And that you know, goes to what I said in reference to the thing when I pulled up China is like when more and more businesses leave the U.S. and go to China or go to other places um, in the world, then it makes the overall value of this country basically lower because we don't produce anything or much of anything here, you know? So, so with that being said, once you have less stuff being produced here and having the country more reliant on other countries to produce things, then that's where you're going to have this particular um, trade deficit. So I uh, go there, 110, 95, 61. So it was going, it was going down a little bit. Then it goes back up 79, 99, 116, 125, 144. 155 down to 146 and 151 and 168. So you see that it's going going up there in reference to that. But like I was saying in reference to the thing with the dollars to euros, you have to see what's going on as far as like um you know what was going on. See, like it's like you were saying there, Taryn, everything was shipped overseas. All right. Um. Hold on. Hold on there, Tony. Real quick. Let me see. Uh. Here. So. Um. I have to get you this thing here real quick. This link real quick. So. Um. Hold on. Hold on. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna get you the link here real fast so that you could uh, go on through audio. Um. Let's see if I can get that direct. But I send it to you directly. And um, what I'll also do is I'll post the link, you know, in the in this uh, you know video thing here, so that you'll be able to see it. But um, yeah, like I said, um, the thing the thing is is with all of the all of the businesses uh, going overseas. <laughs> oh no! Come on, yo, Kelly, Mike, we gotta do it, man. We got. Yo, he wanted to be part of this conversation. We got to get Wally on here, man. We got to do it. So I sent him the link. <laughs> I sent him the link, man. I sent him the link. Um, it is on uh, here. It's on the. It's on the uh, the video. But we, yo, Tony, Tony was really, you know, determined. So. Let me see if we could have this on here. Hopefully this, this all goes well. Do we have Mr. Tony Watley on here with us? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Uh, 
All right. So like I said, Tony is in a secret location. He cannot provide that information right now. So we have oh. him on audio. All right, hold on. Oh, you still there with us? Tony. I'm getting feedback. I got to figure out how to stop that. Okay, okay. Um, are you like on headphones? I don't know how to figure it out. How do I figure this out? Uh, usually with the echo is because um, you might have to have like uh, headphones or earphones before you get on. So that might be the issue. So I need some earphones? Yeah, that would usually uh, fix it. All right, hold on. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if uh, he can uh, you know, get those earphones and if that uh, helps him out uh, there a little bit more. Uh, Taryn, I did say that um, you know, gave uh, salutations to Tony. Um, of course, we <laughs> we have a hater of Tony already on uh, with uh, my Michael <laughs> Kelly Mike. Oh man. So uh, we'll see if, uh, if Tony can get those uh, earphones. And um, you know, once he does that, then we should be able to be ready to go. All right, I got these earphones in. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. How about this? Uh, how about for me? Have any echo? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. So, all right, good. All right. Um, I guess we have uh, someone that is kind of like curious as to uh, who you are, but um, you could like briefly describe your background uh, here uh, before we go into this discussion, if you want. Oh, and still there with us, Sony? I think he's still trying to um, work the uh, earphones and, and things like that. So, because um, right now it seems like uh, he is um, muted. Um, so let me uh, see if I could uh, try something here. Um, let me see if I could like unmute you back on. Oh, okay. Um, looks like they're still trying to uh, get their thing going. Uh, you you get you there with us, Tony? I'm here, but I keep hearing the double talk. Oh, the double talk. Okay. Um, let me see if I can do uh, something. I'm not sure if that could uh, basically work. So what I'm going to do is I'll uh, let you talk uh, here for a bit, and then I'll see if I'll come back on. So go ahead. It, yeah, it's actually more of a, it's more of a delay than it is a double talk. Like, I'll hear you and then I'll hear you again. Mm, okay. Uh, let me see if I could, um, you know, try, try something here on my side as well. All right. So, um, hold on just a second. Y'all see if I could do that. Ah, has my other icon on. So y'all could basically see what other aliases I have. Um, so you can go ahead. All right. Again, I can't talk loud because of where I am. And you know that's almost impossible for me. So this is what's going on. 
I am uh, kind of sh shocked about this whole concept that you seem to have where you believe that Donald Trump in the last three years has actually done something positive for our economy. You seem to think that because Donald Trump has started a trade war with China, that that is actually a positive and something that is being uh, good for America. When in actuality, all Donald Trump has done is a shell game. He's showing America that he's fighting with China while he's over borrowing money from the EU. And while the deficit with China might be going down, the deficit with the EU continues to rise so that the national deficit has not done anything but had a new booster rocket put on it and taken off in the air because now our deficit, not only trade deficit, but overall deficit is twice what it was three years ago when Donald Trump took over as president of the United States. But you st still seem to think that this man is doing something positive for America. And I'm trying to make you understand that this man is a con artist. He is a magician. He's one of those people that makes you look at this side of his hand because he's over here doing something with the other side of his hand. That's Donald Trump. And you are one of those diddy diddy doo 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 dee dum dums who are falling for the hack trick. Donald Trump is got you fooled. <laughs> um, now with uh, just a comment that was put up, uh, the thing with Trump is they say that he cut regulations helping jump to jumpstart the economy. Uh, by cutting taxes and so much more. Now, uh, one thing that you're saying is to kind of quote what George W. Bush said in the past, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. Um, so that seems to be uh, your stance. Um, but what I've been uh, showing or what I was uh, presenting is that there have been policies put in place and also executive orders to you know, promote the um, use of goods from the United States, uh, particularly with the steel industry, um, you know, also recently with the oil industry as well, that makes more of the businesses here in the U.S. be used more than what it is in the other countries. So even though I did post up China, you're going to be seeing changes within the EU as well to where more businesses are going to open up here in the U.S. because of policies that have been made over the past couple of years in comparison to, um, you know, what's happening uh, now. Um, let me see here. So um, with that being said, I'm going to, you know, have you reply and then I'm going to try something here um, before I'm back on the mic. So, Tony, if you're still with us, uh, go ahead and respond. Uh, Tony, you still you still on? Okay, what I'm trying to make you understand is what I put up on the post, and I I'm just gonna focus on a few of the. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. OK, what I'm trying to make you understand and what I am trying to get through to you is that this economy is doing well. I'll give you that. But this economy is not doing what it's doing because Donald Trump did anything. This economy was put into motion. It, let's put it this way. It's like a, 
it's like a uh a, a, a ship okay a ship on the ocean if all of a sudden you have to turn that ship around that ship is not going to turn around on a dime that sh it's going to take a real big swing for that ship to turn around and when that ship i mean i need you to see this visually in your head imagine a ship having to turn around barack obama had a ship that was going down 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 in what we called a great recession okay it took him two years three years to turn that ship around it that's not something that happens overnight that's not something that happens instantly it takes two three years to turn that ship around he finally got that ship turned around and then for the next five or six years in his second term he got that ship moving forward donald trump becomes president and you have to understand the ship doesn't change it's the same thing the ship is moving forward going up at this point so Donald Trump becomes president, but the ship is still moving up. It's not like Donald Trump turned the ship around on the day he became president and made it do something that it wasn't already doing. Donald Trump just took over the, the helm of a ship that was on its way up to begin with. And then he, once he became the captain of the ship, he said, look at what I'm doing. When in actuality, it wasn't what he was doing. He just took over the captain of a great ship. Now, what he has done is come in and he has destroyed that ship. He has put holes in that ship. And now that ship is in trouble versus taking over a ship that was in great shape. And that is what I'm trying to say to you is, Donald Trump is not what you are making Donald Trump out to be. He's not an economic genius. He hasn't done anything economically that impresses anything to any real e economists because they know that the economy was already headed in this direction before Donald Trump ever took the helm. Donald Trump didn't do this. Barack Obama did this. But Donald Trump is in the uh, uh, is about to destroy this within four years of being the president of the United States. I can't hear you talking. All right, you hear me? Yes, I yes, can hear I you can. now. All right. Uh, it's something there. Yeah, I guess it's my side. Now, now what I was saying was the thing about uh, you were talking about the ship going from one to, you know, to run direction, uh, going to the negative side, and that it takes some time for that ship to turn around before it could go the other direction. So you're saying like within those first four years that Obama was in office that it basically turned around and then that he was trying to shift that thing back over. So what I wanna know is what was it that Obama did to turn that ship around? That's, that's what I wanna know real quick.
Uh, you're able to, uh, yeah, you're able to uh, uh, respond to that? I'm, I'm still hearing the double take, so hold on a second. All right. All right. When Obama took over the economy, what he did first and foremost was Oh, I'm sorry. I'm hearing the double take again, but let me start over. Mm -hmm. What Obama did to change the economy was he recognized that the real way to stimulate the economy is not from the top down, which is the trickle down economic model of the Republican Party, where you give all the money to the rich people, and then you say, well, they're going to start building businesses and spending the money, and it's just going to trickle down to the rest of us. That's not how it works, because when you give all of those tax breaks like Donald Trump did when he first became president, when you give it to the rich, the rich does not take the money and trickle it down. The rich takes the money, they invest it, and they save it, and then it never trickles down. So what you do is you just gave all this money to rich people that didn't need it, and then they just took the money and you just made them richer. What Obama did was he realized that the real way that you help the economy is you take it from the bottom up and then all boats rise. That's the difference. The difference is not that we have a top down trickle, it's that we have a bottom up rise. So what Donald what Barack Obama did was he invested in the lower classes. He invested in the bottom. He made sure that Ford and GM and the banks that could make loans to people and all of those people stayed solvent. And he put in restrictions and guidelines that said, by making you stay solvent, you will give loans to these people and you will help these people out and you will approve these loans or else we're going to call in your loan. And when he did that, that is what got money back into the system and stimulating the economy. When he made the economy get stimulated, put money back into people's pockets, then all of a sudden those people started buying. When those people started buying, all of a sudden factories need to start making more stuff because it's a simple thing of uh, su supply and demand. So once the demand went up, the supply had to go up which means the companies had to start making things again. They had to start selling things again. Competition went back up over the companies. They started bringing prices down. And all of a sudden, everything, all boats rose. And that is the way that this has worked different for Democrats and Republicans for the last 60 years. Democrats want to take the money from the bottom and raise all boats. Republicans want to take the money and give it to the top and let it trickle down and it never works, ever. And that's how Barack Obama rose the economy and how Donald Trump is destroying the economy. And he thinks that this $1,200 is going to make a difference. $1,200 is somebody's rent. They get to pay the rent one month and they don't get to go out and buy nothing at Walmart. They don't get to go out and buy buy a new car. They don't because twelve hundred dollars ain't gonna make them be able to make that monthly payment the next month. Twelve hundred dollars ain't gonna help nobody. Okay. Um, now you were talking about the whole. You were talking about the thing in reference to the. Uh, $1,200. That's part of the CARES Act uh, that went through the House 
and then was approved by the Senate. Now, there were multiple things in reference to um, that particular bill. Um, for one, when it went through, the, initially went through the House, the Senate blocked it until it was modified. Then when the Senate approved it, it did have the thing in reference to um, the economic stimulus for individuals, but it also had the economic stimulus for businesses, whether it was small, mid-sized or large businesses. Now, the thing about that was we've had instances where a lot of the businesses went through loopholes using franchisee um, excuses to get most of the loans that small businesses that are, you know, mom and pop businesses were supposed to get. So even with that, they had uh, that particular issue. Um, uh, so that was the thing in reference to that initial bill, HR 748. Um, it's about over 880 pages long. Um, so that's the thing on that. Um, yeah, I think it, you might be uh, right in references. I'm not sure why. Um, the feedback is getting that from my uh, microphone. Um, hopefully I could uh, try something here um, uh, a little bit. So, um, you know, what What I'll try to do is I'll try to see if, uh, you know, I could uh, tone down a couple of things here on my side so that the feedback uh, doesn't uh, go through on his side. Um, hopefully that works a little better. Um, so, um, I wanted to see if I could pull up the thing with that HR 748, but I don't have like a direct link to give like a quick summary of 748. I have the link for the, you know, the whole entire bill for HR 748. I actually have the PDF saved on my computer. So, I mean, I could, to, I could even like, you know, show that thing in there where it talks about the CARES Act, um, uh, you know, that shows how many pages that particular bill is, and the other one, which is that, uh, I think it's the HR 6800, which is over 1600 pages long, is the next uh, quote unquote stimulus bill that they are trying to pass. So um, you do have, like I said, the one side with the 1200 uh, stimulus for individuals, 2400 uh, for um, couples, and also the additional money, I think it's like 500 per uh, child that they have. Uh, but you also are supposed to get um, increases for loans for uh, small, mid-sized, and large businesses. Like for a quick example, I even you know applied for um, you know one of those loans you know when this first started out, um, but it was basically denied. But I do know someone that is a small business that has been able to get a loan for up to one million dollars. Okay, so that's one. That's the thing on one side. Um, but as far as like the whole thing with the economy boost, you know, um, you still have the thing as far as like the economy basically being um, on the on the positive side. Um, so um, the, there's one thing that I wanted to uh, bring up here real quick, um, because I was going to uh, argue this thing on uh, Trump's side. So this was one example of what I was saying as far as like getting in things done to positively increase the amount of jobs that are within this particular country. Now, this is like back in 2017, Executive Order 13788, uh, by American and higher American. So uh, that means that like all sections, regulations, rules, and executive orders relating to fe federal procurement or federal grants, uh, including those that refer to by America or by American that require or provide a preference for the purchase or acquisition of goods, products, or materials produced in the United States, including iron, steel, and manufactured goods. So for example, um, there is a website that I go to, um, sam.gov. At that particular website, that's where you can bid for federal government contracts and also get federal grants and loans. Now, what they're trying to do is they're trying to promote the um, acquisition of, well, I wouldn't say acquisition, I would say that companies that, you know, apply for uh, those contracts or put place their bids, as long as they're basically, what I would say, uh, 70 or 80% American based or more, 
then they'll, you know, award more of those contracts to those companies than others that have, you know, basically their businesses overseas. So because of that, that's where they're going to, you know, try to increase the productivity of these goods and services here in America. And the more money that they get, the more uh, people that they can hire within this particular country. So in, in one reference, when you talk about this particular executive order that was in 2017 by American and higher American is one of the things that Trump is doing right now via executive order to enforce, you know, more um, businesses to try to increase the amount of productivity that they have. I know that you talked about the thing with Ford and and all those other businesses, but you see that he's doing that right now with the likes of the same thing when it comes to this COVID-19 thing with Ford, GM, Walmart, and other businesses that he has uh, referenced uh, over the past couple of months. So, you know, once we, we fig- once we see what happens after this whole COVID-19 starts to phase, phase out, then you're going to see the economy basically rebound because of the policies and the executive orders that are put in place in order to increase the productivity and to increase the employment uh, from these companies of the individuals that are here in America uh, there. So um, what I would like to know is what was it that Obama did also as far as like executive orders that help businesses within this country to uh, basically increase because if I'm not mistaken, uh, he had some uh, particular comment that he made um, in the past uh, as far as like the economy is concerned. Um, so I want to see if I can uh, pull up this particular clip uh, from uh, former President uh, Barack Obama. So wait a see. minute. Let, let me answer your question before you put okay. up a clip. OK. OK. What did Obama do? See, the the thing that I'm having a problem with right now is this ability for the Republicans to rewrite history. Let's take it back. The American Recovery Act of 2009 included a stipulation in it that was called by American. See, you guys don't, you, you act like you don't remember this. There was a stipulation in the 2009 American Re- Recovery and Investment Act, I think that's the name of it, of 2009. And in that act, when we gave out all of that money to get America back on track, Barack Obama put into that legislation by American, a a, a stipulation that said by American, if you want to get uh, this money, you have to invest in American corporations. You have to do things with American corporations. And it was the Republican Party who told Barack Obama if he wanted the sti- the, the uh, Recovery Act to pass, he had to drop the Buy American part of the stimulus package. Look it up. Matter of fact, let me look it up. Let me, l- you want to put up something, let me put up something. I, I'm going to find it right now. I'm gonna find it right now. Are you gonna try to uh, find the PDF? I could, like, I got the PDF, you know, loaded for the Buy American Act. The the actual American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. No, no, no. There was a there was a specific part of it that dealt with buying Buy American. And did did I just put that up? Did you just see it? Is that? Uh, a- uh, hold on, I, I'm not sure because you know, with a phone, I'm not sure if you're able to uh, share it, share it, uh, from the phone. All right. Now, 
I'll, I'll be able to I'll be able to pull up what, what what you're talking about. OK, well, I need you to put that up for me, because okay. what happened was Barack Obama in the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act di did put in a stipulation. It wasn't an executive order. It was going to be part of a law. That is different from an executive order. The one thing about an executive order is an executive order only lasts as long as you are the executive. The second another president comes in, he can overturn that executive order, just like Donald Trump did with all of Barack Obama's executive orders. The difference with Barack Obama is he didn't put it in an executive order. He put it in a law that was going to make it a law that these companies had to buy American and that these companies had to invest in the American economy. And the Republican Party demanded that he took that out because they were making too much money by going overseas to China and overseas to uh, Asia and getting this cheap labor and making more profits. And it was the Republican Party that destroyed the Buy American stipulation in the stimulus package and the American Recovery Act and Reinvestment Act of 2009. Look it up. Um, well, the thing is, you don't have to look it up. I posted the thing there where it shows that stipulation of uh, the thing with Buy American. Uh, where it does say, like, uh, for example, uh, none of the funds appropriated or otherwise made available by this act may be used for a project for the construction, alteration, maintenance, or repair of a public building or public work unless all of the iron, steel, and manufactured goods used in the project are produced in the United States. So that, I guess, is what you're um, bringing up. Mm -hmm. And the what? Republican Congress made him take it out, made him take that stipulation out. So okay. when you want to sit and say that Donald Trump did something and Barack Obama didn't do something, that's a lie. Barack Obama tried to make it a law, not an executive order, a law that if you are going to build something and you're going to make something in America, you have to buy American products. He was going to make it a law. And the Republicans refused to allow him to do it. Not the Democrats, the Republicans. Well, the thing is that you, um, I guess you uh, present that Donald Trump is a Republican, um, but there is a term that is used around politics called Republican in name only. Oh my God. Well, and Hey, that's what it is. So I know that multiple Republicans do not align with President Trump because they know that he is not completely like the Republicans that you talk about when it comes to what happened in 2009. He's not what, with them. What, but so, what I want you to do is I want you to admit on this live chat on this debate that what you are saying is not factual. A Barack Obama did, in fact, try to put a American only by American law into effect, not a, an executive order, but an actual law. It's right there in your face. You even read it. It's right there in your face. Barack Obama tried to pass that. And while you want to sit and say, well, Donald Trump's not really a Republican, the Republican Party stopped it. The Republican Party said they would not vote for the stimulus package if he put that by American only stipulation into the package. So that was not Democrats and that was not Barack Obama. That was the Republican Party of the United States of America. And I need you to admit that on live television or live chat right now in this debate. Actually, what we are going to do on this debate is the thing that I was going to bring up. 
because the reason why I asked the question that I asked originally is because later on down the line, what was it that Barack Obama said in reference to the economy when it comes to America? Let's see. But for those folks who've lost their job right now because a plant went down to Mexico, you know, that isn't going to make you feel better. And so what we have to do is to make sure that folks are trained for the job that are coming in now, because some of those jobs of the past are just not going to come back. And when somebody says, like the person you just mentioned, who I'm not going to advertise for, that he's going to bring all these jobs back. Well, how exactly are you going to do that? What are you going to do? There's, the, there's no answer to it. He just says, well, I'm going to, I'm going to negotiate a better deal. Well, how, what, how exactly are you going to negotiate that? What magic wand do you have? And usually the answer is he doesn't have an answer. That so was a, that was a perfect. Claims, that was perfect. So he what claims you just that he doesn't that have perfect. an answer. But what you are seeing now, over the course of the previous five six months plus, is that change for more of the businesses to be open within this particular country? Bullshit. Okay, that's what you claim. Bullshit. What, what, Bar what Barack Obama is trying to say and what Barack Obama meant with that is the industrial revolution jobs are gone. Those are the go jobs that got shipped out. We are not in the industrial revolution anymore. That's 20th century. We are the 21st century and 21st century jobs are technology jobs. And that is what he is saying. We can't keep holding on to the past because the past is in the past and you are not going to bring the past back. And the future is technology. And what we need to be investing in and making sure that is built in America is technology jobs. Stop worrying about factory jobs and start worrying about technology jobs. That is what we have to teach our children. That is what we have to prepare the next generation for is the future, not the past. Technology jobs is what you're saying, huh? That is the future. Mm, even if you claim that it's the future, you know where those technology jobs are going? Guess what? Still overseas. Not if we change that right now. Not if we get, make sure that our kids are the most competitive of the of the world and make sure that when it comes to technology, people want you to come to America for labor versus going to the rest of the world. I'll give you a prime example because I'm an older person. There was a time in this country when no one bought American cars. No one bought J American cars. They bought Japanese cars. There was a time in this country when Japan ran the market when it came to uh, buying cars. And because they ran the market when it came to buying cars, the reason why is because Japan had the technology and they were making cars faster, lighter, and cheaper for less money. And they were doing that while we were over here making these big tanks that, did, that were not fuel efficient and was costing us to death. And Japan killed us in the 80s because of that technology. They were te more technologically advanced than we were in the auto industry. And that's what killed our auto industry was the fact that we were so far behind the curve in technology. That is what killed us. So what we had to do was we had to go to GM and Ford and all of these people and say, look, you got to stop all of this big, crazy, heavy 
gas guzzling cars and you have to get with the program. You have to make better cars that are more fuel efficient, lighter and less expensive. All of a sudden we started doing that and we became back. We came back in the world when it came to fighting with Japan over cars. I use that as an example to say that's where we are now in the technology war. If we can get our young people trained in high schools right now and in colleges right now for the future to be the best in medicine and the best in technology today so that in later on in the 21st century when they are looking for the best in the world they have to come to america for the best in the world and the problem is if you want to keep teaching them to go out and have a factory job and you want to keep telling uh, our young people everybody don't have to have an education then you are dooming yourself to lose this fight that we are having to be the world leader in e economics because if we keep holding on to factory jobs and coal mining jobs then we are going to become dinosaurs and what barack obama was saying on that is we got to let that mentality go we got to let the 20th century go and we got to focus on the 21st century and the 21st century is technology job not industrial revolution jobs. Well, here's here's a couple of things in reference to that, you know, that um, thing that you explained there, where you're talking about the whole shift from um, industrial to technology. Um, you talked about the example about the Fours, the General Motors and the American based cars in the 1980s, the Buicks, the Oldsmobiles or, you know, the Cadillacs or whatever they had uh, there in the 1980s, um, basically being um, surpassed by the Toyotas or the Hondas and whatnot um, overseas. Now, the thing is here with technology, you you basically may be uh, facing that same problem. Even though we have those programs that are in the, um, I would say the middle and high schools, the STEM programs, once you get into the colleges, you're still, they're still competing against those uh, from overseas that are in the, the, those particular fields when it comes to technology, the electrical engineering, so the computer engineering fields. Because you're not seeing most of us there in that particular um, field. And this has been like that since the late 90s. Like a lot of them come from overseas or, you know, basically uh, foreign exchange programs. So we still have a good amount of <laughs> catching up to do in order to compete in that particular department. And, you know, while those factory jobs, as you say, are you know, as you claim they're few and far between, you still have to have that particular thing there because when it comes to the factory jobs, as far as like mechanics and things like that, you still have to be able to compete in that market because you could go to, you know, your, you know, your body shops or whatever it is and still have to, you know, deal with those that are not necessarily but, based from here. James, let's no. let's let's keep it honest. Let's be real. What is what it, the 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 honest answer here is very simple. You're gonna have to make a choice. You don't have to like a choice. You don't have to want to make the choice. But you don't have any choice in the choice. You have to make a choice. And what Barack Obama was saying, and what is being tried by everybody else is the choice should be the future and and donald trump has come back into this damn country and ran around this country telling everybody no let's go back to the past let's go back to the past let's build back up our factories let's go back into coal let's do oh that sounds all wonderful and great and good but that is the past you are literally handicapping this country for the 21st century if you go and start building a bunch of factories 
for a bunch of people to go working in instead of focusing on what the future is. And the future is technology. The future is not factories. You got to understand that our 20th century was different from the Middle East 20th century. Our 20th century was different from Asia's 20th century. Our 20th century was different from China's 20th century. We were far advanced in the 20th century to these countries. So that in the 21st century, they are just now getting into our 20th century. That's why they're doing the factories and the industrial revolutions and all of those things, because for them, that is their next step because they're behind us. We can't go back to competing with them on what we've already won with. We have to keep moving ahead and make sure that our future, we are still advanced and farther ahead than the rest of the world. And if we do what Donald Trump wants to do and go back to start making factories and investing in coal and wanting to stay with oil instead of going to natural gases and and, uh, solar, we are going to be destroying our future, worried about our present, focused on our past. And it's interesting that you kind of say that because um, solar is actually being looked into. I'm not you know, certain about this whole thing with coal because I don't know where that's particularly coming from, but solar, electric, and other, you know, um, natural kind of um, uses for energy are being looked into uh, here within this particular um, administration. So I'm not sure not where that's heavily. coming from. Not um, heavily. Now, Name one time when you've heard Donald Trump talk about solar, natural gas, and these types of things. You always hear him talking about, we're going to bring back the coal mines. We're going to bring back the oil industry. We're going to keep the cars running. All of that stuff is 20th century. Donald Trump harps on the 20th century. We are not in the 20th century anymore. Just because you have all these baby boomers that can't let go of the 20th century, just like Donald Trump, you need to understand that the next generation, the X generation, and the boomers have said it is time to move on. But we understand you can't move on until the people who control the world, which is the baby boomers right now, let go of the past. And they're not willing to let go of the past. So you're saying that uh, Donald Trump didn't necessarily talk about, you know, like things with, uh, you know, natural like energy, you know, using energy, uh, greenhouse energy and that type of thing before. Mm, That's I'm saying he doesn't promote it. I'm saying he doesn't promote it. I'm not saying that you can't find a clip where he said something about it. I'm saying he doesn't promote it every time he's out there on his stump speeches. He doesn't promote it every time he's out there campaigning. You don't see him making uh, commercials about uh, natural gas. You don't see him making commercials about uh, solar and solar energy. His administration is not embracing the future. They're holding on to the past. Okay, I'll see if I can find something in reference to the thing at, uh, for coal and renewable energy later on down the line, um, so that we'll be able to uh, see what's um, going to come from that. But uh, there's like a few other things that you know we'll have to you know go over in reference to uh, that particular uh, subject because I think. You know, when it comes to the whole thing for educating um, the future or the students of the future, that there has to, you know, be certain things in place for them so that once they do come out of their, you know, training or education or whatever it is, that those particular positions will be available for them. Because if not, then you're going to have a whole nother set of, you know, unemployed or underemployed uh, people 
that will boot, that'll just have that unemployment rate go back up again, you know, so that it doesn't go from whatever it is, right? I wouldn't say right now, because hardly anybody's working right now, unless if you're with the government. But um, once things start to slowly come back up, and then the unemployment rate starts to get back to closer to what it was before, then you have to see after all of that, if it goes back up once again, because a lot of the positions that are out there, our people are not necessarily trained for it. So that's well, let's gonna look be at one thing that we're gonna look at. Let's look at history, James. The, Repub the Democratic Party has been fixing the Republican Party's fuck ups for the last 60 years. We needed Carter to come in and fix all the shit that Nixon did. Then all of a sudden, Ronald Reagan went and caused a conspiracy to get elected, had three or four recessions in eight years. H.W. Bush took us to war. Our economy and our deficit was horrible after 12 years of Reagan and Bush, we had to have Bill Clinton come in and fix the economy. He got us to a zero deficit. Matter of fact, it was the first time we had ever had a surplus. We had a surplus after the Democrat came in and fixed the fuck up of the Republicans. Then you got George W. Bush come along and spend every cent of the surplus and put us right back into deficit in eight years. Put us in the Great Recession, which was the greatest recession since the Depression. Then you had Barack Obama have to come in and fix George W. Bush's fuck ups. Get us out of the Great Recession put us on a track to have a very good economy. We had a very growing economy. Everything was going great. Here we get Donald Trump. He comes in, takes all the money. Hold up, you still there? Hold on. Tony, you still there? Shoot, hold up. Oh, I had it. Dad, damn it. Trying to see if he's still there with us. Tony. Oh, I have the audio there, but I mean, it shows that you're still connected, but I'm not getting any audio. Um. Comment. Like I can't even um crap. Looks like he was disconnected. Um I'm gonna you know see if he's still on. He should be able to hopefully he could still you know still um receive this video here, but I'm gonna check something to see what his status is. Um, uh, it's not showing that he's online, um, but here's the thing. Uh, Taryn uh, here says, you know, nothing was great under Obama. So many families suffered having to choose between health insurance or food. Ah, there we go. I knew that there was something that wasn't brought up in reference to the previous administration. And that is what it was. The whole thing about paying higher premiums for the insurance that had basically been passed under the previous administration. See, a lot of people think that that whole new, you know, policy insurance thing that came down, what they kind of call Obamacare, was very beneficial. But what it did was it actually made the insurance companies basically have a monopoly on things and also the thing with the medical industry have a monopoly on things so that treatments and all that type of stuff 
the price wasn't basically watched. So they could boost up the prices of medications and insurance and all of that without any type of regulation. And now a lot of people had to pay out the yin yang in order to be insured in order to get those particular medications or treatments and things like that. And at the same time, they have to take out from, you know, their budget for food or um, any type of amenities that they're, they're having. So, you know, with that being said, that's, that's another thing that is, um, that was a big issue and continues to be a big issue up until this particular point right now. And what people don't realize is the current situation that's happening really has to deal with the medical industry above anything else, because this whole little thing about treatments that people are joking about is more in reference to using more natural based medications that don't cost that much in comparison to uh, what's happening right now. Um, so hold on, let me see here. Um, let me see if we could uh, get back on. Um, hold on, let me see if I could redo the uh, link form um, to see if he's uh, still uh, going. So um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, let's see if he can still come back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to um, uh, give him the link back and uh, see how, how much longer uh, he, he can um, be on for the discussion. Uh, so I'll see if I'll be able to invite him back on and things like that. Um, yep. Therapies versus dangerous vaccines. And the thing about it is, is that you have this whole war going on with the World Health Organization, the CDC, and things like that. So, real quick, I think I have him uh, back on. Uh, see if he's able to be here with us. Uh, Tony, you back? I'm back. All right. How long are you here with us uh, still uh, before we get you? You know, caught <laughs> yeah. We don't want to get you caught. Look, look, I'm, 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 I'm good. But like I said, you, you gonna get me all riled up, and I'm gonna get myself in trouble. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, so I'll, I'll see if um, you have like one little one more thing uh, here that we could talk about, and then I'll let you go so that you won't have to, you know, have you on here for too long. But um, I guess you were talking about, um, like we were talking about the thing with the. Um, you know, with Trump talking about the past and coal and um, you're talking about the thing with Obama uh, looking towards the future and things like that. So I guess we could continue from that particular point. Yeah, my point was I got to the fact that Democrats are always bailing the Republicans out. I got to the point of where yeah. R Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush destroyed this country sent us to war, spent all our money. We didn't even have uh, deficits before Ronald Reagan. Then all of a sudden, we've got all these national debts and all this craziness because he was, he was the inventor of the trickle-down economics. And he was the person that seemed to want to make us believe that if you give the money to the rich, they'll trickle it down to everybody else and the economy will just be great. And we have been going with the Ronald Reagan uh, trickle down economic form for the last 45 years because of the Republicans falling in love with an idiot. Ronald Reagan was an idiot. Anyway, Back to what I was saying about Bill Clinton comes in, he, he fixes the mistakes of the last 12 years of Reagan and Bush. He gets us to a surplus. Then we get ding dong, the witch is dead. George W. Bush, 
He takes us into an unnecessary war, spends all the surplus, giving it to the rich people, and puts us back in debt. And before he leaves, not only does he put us back in debt, he puts us in the greatest recession this country has ever seen since the Depression. In comes Barack Obama to have to have a Democrat save us from a Republican yet again. He turns the recession around. He gets us back on track. He gets us going in the right direction. He does his eight years. We get Donald Trump. And here we are again in the worst situation since the Great Depression. Every single time we get a Republican, we get down to Great Depression economics. And we have to have a Democrat come in and fix it. It has been that way ever since 1960s. And you cannot prove it otherwise. Look at Reagan. Look at Bush. Look at Clinton. Look at Bush. Look at Obama. And look at Trump. Every time a Republican's in, the economy crashes. Every time a Democrat's in, he fixes the economy and gets us out of a Republican hole. Prove me wrong. So you're talking about this whole thing with the uh, regimes of Reagan, with Reaganomics, um, which is basically George H.W. Bush, because Ronald Reagan to me really wasn't the president. So you had Bush still there, Bush again, then Clinton. And after that, you have, you know, like I said, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing, uh, George W. Bush. Then you have Barack Obama. Now, I um, have a question here for you. So um, one person asked, why did Obama bail out the banks instead of helping the American people during his, uh, his regime? Obama bailed out the banks because in the stimulus, he told the banks that the only way they get saved is to be able to give out the loans. You got to realize one thing that was going on during that time was we had the bubble burst in the housing market. All of those banks were the ones that held the loans for those houses. If those banks had went under, millions and millions of people would have lost their homes. I mean, the, when the bubble burst, lots of people lost their homes anyway, but millions and millions, tens of millions of people would have lost their homes. They would have, all of that stuff, because just because the bank goes under, does not mean you don't have to pay that money back. It don't work like that. And it's a situation of where had that bank gone under, those loans would have came into pay at that moment. If you understand uh, economics, that's the way it works. If those banks go under, if the lender goes under, your loan comes into pay immediately. As in, if you owe, if you have a hundred thousand dollar mortgage on your house and your bank goes under, you have to pay that hundred thousand dollars immediately. So it was a situation of where if you don't save the banks, you cause more problems than you fix. So what Barack Obama did was he had to save the banks to save the economy because that's where the money is and that's who's doing the lending. But at the same time of saving the banks, he told them that they have to guarantee loans to uh, certain people at a certain uh, economic level. And like I said, this is another example of all boats rising versus trickle down. That's why he saved the banks. 
Okay. Now, I, I feel that's uh, interesting there in reference to the whole thing with saving the banks and giving them stipulations as far as like loans are concerned. Because one, um, those banks and credit unions, I include credit unions um, because they're kind of like both in the same boat when it comes to issuing loans. They're supposed to be insured or backed. But even with that, as far as like the loans are concerned, with those banks basically being bailed out, they're also supposed to be handing out loans to specific groups, as uh, you may have stated. And I did mention um, in, a, in a previous uh, Facebook video that when it comes to certain groups of people, they don't necessarily get the loans that they apply for. And if they do uh, get granted the loans, either they get a higher interest rate or they don't get the amount that they pr pretty much asked for. So that has been you know, happening over the course of many, many years. Um, I will have to look more into the whole thing with the um, that stimulus for those banks and then see what happened with the results of that. So I'll be able to do a little bit more research and then follow up on this uh, particular thread so that, you know, when you say that, you know, Obama bailed out the banks, what was the result of the banks being bailed out and how did that basically trickle down to uh, the people that were, you know, either in danger of losing their homes or those that were trying to actually apply to get a home at that particular time period? Well, I just want you to know we can have a rumble in the jungle, too. I I I'm good with that. Three, four, five, six, you name it. I'm going to beat your ass on this uh, economy about Donald Trump as many times as you want to take an ass whooping. We can do it. It's all good. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. You don't have a chance to get me. I'm the greatest of all time. I'll be let's not be forming in the rumble in the jungle. I'll, you, I'll give you the rope of dope and I will knock you off just like I knocked that woman. I am the greatest. No, I feel you, I feel you. It's all yeah. good. Great, great uh, discussion here with uh, Antonio Tony Watley. We'll see if we can schedule another one here. Um, in reference to this particular discussion or have another uh, particular subject. Uh, for those that, you know, do want to comment um, in reference to what we talked about, you could do it on the thread here on Facebook. Once again, I thank uh, Tony Wiley for being on as long as he's on. And like I said, he's at a secret location and that is that he's at a secret location. All right. Until yes. I'll catch y'all next time. Peace. All right. Thanks, man. Take care. All right.